Hello, New Beginnings Church family. It is just about 12 o'clock on Friday, which you know what that means. It's time for another installment of Afternoon Devos with me, yours truly, Joshua Rivera. Uh, if you have been following along at all with what I've been doing in the past few weeks, we've been really diving in to uh, the book of Revelation, and even greater so, into end time prophecy. Because the most important thing for us to understand about God's word is that we must understand it and we must live according to it. And we can't live according to something that we don't know anything about. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of vision or for lack of knowledge. So today I want to create in you a sense of understanding of what God has prophesied in his word through the writings of men inspired by the Holy Spirit so that today we can live with a hope and a faith that he who promised is faithful. So without further ado, let's pray and get into God's word, shall we? Dear Father God, I thank you right now that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But before that day comes, even now, even today, we can call you Lord. We can call you King of our lives and of our hearts. And when we put you on the throne of our hearts, we can live with a peace and assurance that you are bringing everything into its own in time. So as we see you make everything beautiful in its time, Father, we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Now, church, if you remember what we talked about last time I was on with you, we talked about the battle of Armageddon and the second coming of Christ. And we see that that glorious returning of our Lord and Savior brings with it Jesus in all of his glory. You see, in the New Testament, when, when the people of, of Israel and the people of Jerusalem looked to Jesus in his first advent, they looked to him as a physical king. But he did not come to be a physical t king in that first coming because he first needed to make a way for us to receive that kingdom for which he came. If we had received him as a physical king in that first coming, we would have been labeled in the eyes of God as rebellious and as worthy of the wrath that we see poured out when we look at things like the, the Great Tribulation or, or things like the Battle of Armageddon. And we'll get to see even further along the line the Great White Throne Judgment. So when we look at Christ in his first advent, just like we looked at, look at uh, him in his second, we need to understand the context in which he comes. In his first advent, he came as a savior. He came to be a sacrifice for all. But in his second advent, since he has already established a kingdom, which if you're a believer like you and I uh, hopefully are, we are subjects of that kingdom that he is going to establish, we see that. When that kingdom comes, we rule and reign with him. So let's look into what is this, this, this time of, of his ruling and reigning. Uh, the Bible, Bible scholars label it as the millennial reign of Christ. But let's see, where, where, we, where do we get that? So if you would turn with me to Revelation chapter 20, starting at verse 1. This is where we see uh, the mention of this thousand year reign of Christ. So this is what, is what it says. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more Till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. Now let me stop right there. 
First of all, when we talk about the millennial reign of Christ, you might think, millennial, what are you talking about? The millennium falcon? Are we talking about Star Wars here? No. See, millennium or millennial is, has its root in, in, in the Greek word for thousand. I, it might be Greek, might be Latin. I might have my two uh, dead ancient languages confused. But we get it from the root of uh, that word for thousand, one thousand or one thousand years. That's like, like when we talked about Y2K, you old folks might get that reference. When we talk about the millennium, we talk about a thousand years happening. So we see that for a thousand years, Satan is bound and thrown into the bottomless pit. Now let me help you understand what that means for us as both the church and for the world. Satan is a deceiver. He is the, the king and the father of lies. You see all the way back in Genesis that the very first lie, which was, did God really say that? Which to the, uh, his, our response should always be when Satan tries to trick us and say, did God really say? Yes, he did. And he's true to his word. But as him, as him being uh, removed as a deceiver, we only have one narrative to hear and to understand and to believe. And that is the narrative that Jesus is king. You see, in this, we see Jesus is going to rule and reign. And let's continue to read on so we can see what that looks like. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. To them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or in, on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Now let me stop right there. We need to understand right now, as believers, we sit in heavenly places with Christ. We have been given the power and the authority that Christ was given on this earth. But even more so, as Christ comes in the millennial reign of Christ, we will sit as both kings and priests on this earth. Now let me stop right there for a second to explain something for you. If we reign as kings and priests, that means that there must be those whom we rule and reign over. And we'll get back to that as we progress farther on. But I want to finish this section, starting at verse 5. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection, over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Right there, church, that is our blessed hope. See, when we are resurrected and see ourselves resurrected in that second, that second resurrection, or that first resurrection, excuse me, with Christ, in that moment, we are no longer subject to death. You see, the Bible says that it is appointed to man once to die and then to face the judgment. And at this point, we have faced judgment and are allowed to enjoy the thousand years and then eternity thereon with Christ ruling and reigning. Now, I'd love for you to turn with me to uh, another passage of scripture where we're going to look a little more in depth into what uh, the millennial reign of Christ might look like and will look like. So if you would turn with me to Isaiah chapter 2, starting at verse 2. Isaiah 2, starting at verse 2. And this is what it says. Now it shall come to pass that in the latter days, and this is in the millennial reign, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow to it. Now, when the Bible talks about this mountain, we're talking about the new Jerusalem, that Jesus will set up his kingdom in physical Jerusalem. You know, there might be a dispute now as to whether or not Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, but there will be no dispute in that day 
what Jerusalem stands for. It stands for the, the, the beacon of, and the signal of the reign and rule of the kingdom of Christ. Verse 3, many people shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his paths. Now I want to stop right there to point out something real quick that in my study of God's word, in my study of end time prophecy, that really struck me as a surprise. You see, the thousand years end when Satan is loose from the pit and there is a time period in which uh, he is allowed to tempt and to deceive for a short period of time to see if he can get anybody to turn from Christ. Well, we'll get to that in a later discussion, but I want you to know those people that are going to be deceived are not gonna be those who have received that second resurrection. When we are resurrected with Christ, we are not resurrected in natural bodies. We are resurrected putting away mortal and picking up immortality. You see, an immortal body cannot be subject to sin and death. But however, there will be a natural man still present on the earth at this period in time. Those who have gone through the great tribulation and have honored and respected Israel, those who have not submitted to the Antichrist and to the, that for which he, he set out to do in the earth, those will be the natural men for which we will rule and reign over, as I mentioned previously. You might be familiar with a passage where Jesus separates the sheep from the goats, those sheep that are separated, that cared for his brethren, as Jesus puts it, or his, the brothers of his, Israel, those will be those who will be able to inherit the kingdom of Christ. And they are the ones who will go up to the mountain of Israel to receive instruction from the Lord. Continuing in verse three, it says, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. I don't want to take more time from you, but I really want to put this in perspective. We've heard, uh, we may have heard of the 144,000 separated. That is the number of Jewish people who are separated for God and will become the evangelists of the world to tell the world, those who may not know still, who are a natural man, who may not know that Christ has come and inherited his kingdom so they can tell those people who Jesus really is. I encourage you to dive into this stuff. It's really interesting and deep stuff to understand just how great God's purpose for us and for the nation of Israel is. But let me give you one last point. He shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Now, I don't know about you, but there is not a single point in this teaching today more poignant and more timely than that. You see, Jesus will rule and reign with a rod of iron. And in that, in that time, when he reigns, he brings ultimate peace, prosperity, and justice on this earth for that thousand years and then forevermore. And so when we look to our world and to see what our world looks like right now, and we see the death, we see the decay, we see the atrocities that are committed every single day, we need not look to the east or to the west. But we must look to Jesus, who is our king now and forevermore, and pray that our world will receive him, that when he comes in his glory, there will be those who know him, not, not as a conquering king, but already as Lord and Savior. Because church, what a glorious savior we have who has taken all that this world could have offered and said, it's not worth it for me to receive a blessing, but rather to give it. 
And so as we look forward into the world today, I just want to encourage you that there is coming a day, there is coming a time when true justice will be served and all will see that Jesus is king. Let me pray with you real quick. Father, thank you so much that God, despite what happens here and now, God, that Father, we have but one thing to remember, that we are not residents of this earth, of this kingdom, but we are residents of a kingdom to come. And we are ambassadors of that kingdom, ambassadors of the peace, of the prosperity, of the justice, of the love that comes when you, Jesus, are king. So Christ, before you are, are king and reign and rule in Jerusalem, Father, reign and rule in our hearts. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Church, just want to give you a quick reminder that this Sunday we are going into hybrid church. Hybrid church, what does that look like? Listen, walk in, drive in, tune in. Whatever you're comfortable with and whatever you know God has put on your heart to do, make sure that you are joining us as a church body so that we can glorify our risen King. Amen, church? I want to just encourage you to have a wonderful day and Look into God's word, study it for yourself so that you can test and approve what God's perfect will is for your life. God bless you and have a great night. Amen.